Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, I thought we'd take a look at a topic that I have looked at before from a different angle, but is quite topical right now. Are falling house prices good or bad news? Now, the norm in the UK for a long time, two or three decades, has been, broadly speaking, rising prices, with a few exceptions. So we're not used to falling prices. I'm going to take a look at the winners from rising prices. Those will be my potential losers from falling prices and vice versa. So in other words, falling prices can turn things slightly on the head. And there's a surprising group of winners if they're prepared to be patient in the group I'm going to talk about in a moment. So, first of all, are house prices falling? Well, it depends who you ask. It depends which region you look at. And it depends whether you look at nominal or real prices. But the answer is basically yes. I think it's fair to say right now, and right now being uh, around January, February 2019, where are we? Annual highest price inflation is between 0.1%, if you ask the nationwide. Now, admittedly, that's an average. And the Halifax tend to focus more up north. They reckon it's around 1%. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's, the, that's still a rise, isn't it? Albeit a small one. Mm, yes, but if you're talking about is my wealth increasing over the long term, you need to look at real effects. And with general inflation, according to the government, the Office for National Statistics running at 2.1%, basically take either of those numbers, deduct 2.1%, and essentially in real terms, as they call it, post-inflation terms, it's fair to say prices are falling. Not quickly, but they are drifting downwards. And that's not something that a lot of people in the UK have been used to over the last two or three decades. So we need to work out who does this help and who does it hinder and why. So in other words, we're going to put the media headlines to one side. The media tends to paint falling house prices as a sort of general catastrophe, if you like, and just take a look at actually who might be the winners and losers. And are there any opportunities in here? So first of all, um, whether you're a winner or a loser, it depends. So rising prices are what most people are used to. And they, these people do get upset when prices stop rising because if you're at the top of the property ladder, all right, or you're a property investor, rising prices have been good news for you. Why? Well, if you're an elderly couple, you've paid off your mortgage years ago, you're sitting there with a nice juicy property somewhere, every pound of equity that's added is almost free money. That's going to help with long-term care fees if you choose to go down that route, for example. It is going to mean a bigger inheritance, potentially, ignoring inheritance tax, for those people that you leave behind. So that is good news. For investors, it's also good news. It's what brings investors into the market. After all, rental yields is one side of the equation, Capital gains is the other, and particularly investors who borrow, gear up, they can do sort of doubly well, if you like, and I'll come back to some numbers in a moment. But rising prices do not, as we know, help first-time buyers. It just takes the bottom of the ladder further away from them. And actually, that's quite well known, that group. But the second group, who are not really helped by rising prices, are people who are on the ladder somewhere, maybe on rung two, and want to go up. Right. Ideally, they want prices to level off or fall, for reasons I'll come back to. Now, there are two sides to every coin. It's not all good news for those people, but fundamentally, financially, they're better off when prices are not rising. Okay, so the winners from rising prices, just a quick recap. All right, so older, wealthier owners who are mortgage-free gain extra equity. Every pound added to the value of their property is, some would say, a kind of free pound, in the sense they haven't had to do anything for it other than carry on living in their, their home. Uh, property investors, and um, that's why property investors are drawn into buy to let, for example, the possibility of making money over the long term from rising prices. And overall liquidity is another winner. In other words, when prices are rising, there tends to be lots of property churn, lots of properties available to buy and sell as people try and move around and cash in gains or move up the ladder. But for people moving up, it's more expensive to do so. I'll come back to that in a moment. So the losers from a normal environment, as we call it, of rising prices. Um, so first of all, first time buyers. Obviously, if prices rise, it just means that if you're not on the ladder yet, the deposit you need just keeps growing and growing and growing, as does the mortgage debt potentially, unless you're fortunate enough to be a cash buyer. And for those moving up the ladder, with or without a mortgage. Now, whether or not you're a cash buyer, whether or not you've got a mortgage, basically rising prices are not terribly helpful, as we'll see in a moment, with a quick example. So. Hold on to that thought. Let's, let's do mortgages and moving. And I will do cash, I'll do cash buyers as well, just for good measure. So a lot of people are mortgage. Your current house, example I've made up, is worth 200,000 pounds. And it's got a mortgage of 50% on it. So that means you've got 50% equity, if you like. You've got 100,000 pounds of equity, your money, if you want to see it that way, and you've got a 100,000 pound mortgage. Or put it another way, if you sold the property right now, ignoring fees and so on, 
Basically, you pay off the mortgage and bank the rest. So £100,000 of equity is the bit you bank, £100,000 mortgage. Now, so far, so what? But let's say your next house will cost you £400,000, twice as much. All right? Now, the question then becomes, what mortgage will you need to go from here to here? What loan-to-value ratio does that give you? That's important when you're approaching uh, mortgage lenders, for example, because if that gets too high, you might not get a mortgage. And if you're a cash buyer, just for compare and contrast purposes, how much cash would you need? Let's say you've come into an inheritance suddenly, and you're thinking, what do I do with it? How much cash do I need to put in? So in mortgage terms, well, basically, if we've agreed that over here, you've got £100,000 worth of equity, ignoring fees and so on, stamp duty, which, which can eat away at that, and your next house costs £400,000, you can put the 100 towards it, if you like, and you'll need a mortgage of, let's say, £300,000. 300k. Loan to value? Well, the mortgage is 300, you're trying to buy something worth 400, so that would be around 75%. Sorry if that's a bit scribbly, but you get the idea, the number's fairly simple. Loan to value 75%, so you need to talk to a mortgage lender and say, is that, you know, is that within range for me? For a cash buyer, of course, the loan to value is irrelevant. They're not going to take out a mortgage, but to fund a property worth £400,000, they're going to need to find from somewhere £400,000. Maybe that is uh, 100 from this property, let's say, and then that inheritance I talked about, perhaps, that bonus, if you're fortunate enough to get that kind of size of bonus, uh, whatever it's come from, the cash buyer needs to find £400,000. So this is a scenario of, as I've said, sort of rising prices. Now, let's say that's not the scenario. So you are trying to move house, but prices are falling. So the house you're in isn't worth 200, it's only worth 150. Why? Well, because prices have softened since you bought it. You've still got a mortgage of £100,000. That doesn't go away just because prices are rising or falling. That's debt you've got to pay back. However, here's the good news. Your existing house has dropped by 50k, and proportionately, let's say, slightly unrealistic, you might argue, depends which region you move to and so on, but let's say your next house is not going to cost you 400, it's going to cost you 300. So it's come down a bit as well. So where does that leave you? This is quite interesting, okay? So it's going to leave you needing less debt. Why? Because hypothetically, if you want to see it that way, you know, liquidate that property, pay off the mortgage, and you've basically got £50,000 to put towards the next property. All right, it costs £300,000, so your mortgage is going to be around £250,000. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's good. Let's just go back here a moment. It was £300,000 in the last example, so my mortgage is lower. And it is, and that is good news, all right? Because who wants to take on more debt than they need to? But be careful, because the loan to value, the mortgage is 250, the house costs 300, that's a loan to value of more like 83%. So it would depend whether the mortgage lender is happy with that slightly higher LTV, but you do benefit in terms of taking out less debt overall. For a cash buyer, of course, you're not worrying about mortgages or LTVs. For a cash buyer, the house costs 300,000 pounds, so you need to find 300,000 pounds as opposed to 400,000 pounds in the last example. All right? So there it is. Basically, if you're trying to move up the ladder as a cash buyer or with a, or with a mortgage, you are potentially better off when prices soften, subject to that LTV check I just mentioned. Now, some further thoughts. So to complete the picture here on is it good or bad news, falling prices do tend to reduce choice. You need a bit of patience and you need to be prepared to pounce, potentially, if you are looking to move up the ladder in a market where not so many people are putting their houses on the market, and that's quite important. It can also be difficult to settle what's called a clearing price when not many things are being sold. So valuations can go a bit AWOL. Um, it also affects confidence. So more generally, outside of just property, people tend to spend less, borrow less, when their houses are not rising in value. They do tend, some people have this idea as it's kind of a backup piggy bank, rightly or wrongly, and that will affect their spending elsewhere, and it can reduce supply. So home builders just sort of shut up shop, say, no, not finishing that project, not prepared to do it, not enough buyers at the right prices, so we'll stop building for now, just finish off what we've got on the land bank and come back later. Other, of course, home builders can even go bust if they've overstretched themselves, but that's another set of stories. So there are other sides too, falling house prices. So in conclusion, what do we say? Over the long term, UK prices tend to rise, but like share prices, one could argue, over the long term they tend to rise. So when you get a soft patch, if you are liquid, 
you've got a decent deposit, or you're looking to move up the ladder and you don't overstretch yourself, and you're prepared to be patient, maybe there's an opportunity here. But you've got to be prepared to do your homework, got to be patient, and you've got to be prepared to do what Warren Buffett said was being a little bit greedy when others are fearful. But that principle works in property as it does in things like equities, for example, provided you watch out for the liquidity trap that I just mentioned. Okay, editor at killick.com with queries and to watch other property videos, because I have done a few of these, it would be killick.com forward slash learn.